Hello and welcome to Exchange for Media. With me today is one of the tallest leaders from Indian advertising and marketing industry, and uh, he's uh, he's made us proud by you know uh, managing APAC for his company. Please welcome Mr. Ashish Basin, CEO APAC, Chairman India Dentsu Ages Network. Sir, thank you so much for uh, finding time for doing this for us. My pleasure, Nazir. Good to meet you again. Hope all is well with you. Yeah, thank, thank you, sir. Wish you the same. Sir, uh, as as we were just discussing, you know, before uh, this started, that this has been a very difficult year for uh, most of us. The second year was uh, second wave was very uh, deadly in a lot of ways. So, uh, how much has it impacted uh, Bensu uh, here in India and in the entire APAC region? And uh, when I talk of impact, I also talk of you know. Uh, the overall sentiment, you know, it's just that's not business, you know. The, the two months we were all very disturbed emotionally and mentally also. So, in, with all of those things, you know, how how did you cope as a company, and what what was the impact? Look, I mean, there is no doubt that the pandemic has impacted not just us but everybody uh, quite significantly. And if I look at it from the India point of view, I think we were in general as a country relatively unprepared or underprepared for the second wave particularly and that has impacted everyone uh, in a big way because there was a feeling of helplessness for uh, thankfully now things seem to be a little better we're still probably not out of the woods completely but at least things are a lot better than what they were but at that time if you remember at the peak it was almost a matter of survival you did you know, i mean people were falling ill hundreds of people were falling ill all around you uh, your near and dear ones of, of people who you knew the employees near and dear ones they were falling ill uh, and and you know it, it just felt very helpless because you didn't have enough oxygen or you weren't have, have beds were in shortage or medicines were in shortage and you didn't know what to do uh, and I, I think that was a terrible terrible phase for a period of about four to six weeks thereafter as the peak uh, passed and it started slowing you know, the it started cases started coming down. I think some semblance of stability come in, and today, of course, we're in a, a lot better position and with much much better position. And with uh, vaccination also taking up, I'm, I'm hopeful that uh, we we should not have this, but it's it's significantly impacted. As far as business is concerned, from an, I, I'm just now on from an India point of view, I'll tell you about the region in a while. As far as business is concerned, actually, it was. I would say a little less impact than we had. I'd feared the worst, but it was a little less impact. And I think there were a few reasons for it. One is that IPL was on till about the third week of April. Uh, so, you know, April was, it, it had started weakening towards the second half, but at least it wasn't that bad. May was not great as expected because, you know, one by one markets were going into lockdown. So some clients, uh, the dealerships were closed, etc. But not as severe as it was in the first wave, which was a much longer and a, much more total kind of a lockdown. Now the opening up has started and I think gradually things will get better. And I always say this gradually, I'm, I'm not a believer of that one day there'll be a switch and there'll be whatever this V-shaped recovery and everything will be fine uh, and so on. But I think generally the direction is right. Things are starting to improve. And I think every week, every month, hopefully will be better than the previous month. We're also in the midst of monsoons. And so far the news on monsoons is good. Uh, we always underestimate the impact of monsoons on the Indian economy. Still a large part of our economy, if not agrarian, is dependent upon agrarian. Even industry is dependent upon rural demand in many ways, right? Because you have saturation, near saturation in many categories in urban areas. So the signs on monsoons look good. And my own sense is that if we have a good monsoon and if we don't have a third wave or a fourth wave or whatever and if vaccination goes well, then by the time we get to the festive season, we should be out of the woods and, and things should be back to normal, but it will be a gradual climb back and not a switch on and off kind of a scenario. As far as the rest of the region is concerned, different countries are in different states. So some like China went in first, got out after that, and then didn't really get that impacted for the by the second wave, etc. Others like uh, Taiwan is a great example. They have a very big operation. Almost one year, it was hardly impacted. There were people were working from office on most times. There was no, there were no lockdowns, etc., and they didn't really have even the first wave. Forget about the second wave. But off late, a uh, few weeks ago, even Taiwan has started getting impacted. Vietnam is another such market. So I think different markets are in different uh, states, but by and large, uh, people are 
the econo economy wise less impacted this time because uh, i think there is uh, there is hope that at least the vaccine is there and the vaccination process is on and people have learned to cope better with it uh, some like australia for example the number of cases are pretty low but still off and on melbourne keeps going into lockdowns etc so so it's, we've got to learn to live with a little bit of a yo-yo kind of a on-off waves type of a world until things fully settle down and until vaccination globally comes to a certain level. So it's a, I would say it's a mixed bag. 2020 was uh, clearly a very bad year for most of the agencies. So even uh, Densu, uh, when your results came in, you know, uh, they weren't that good. Uh, most of the figures were in negative. And uh, there was this announcement that, you know, you are uh, the, uh, the organization uh, will restructure a lot of things, you know, uh, uh, there, there would be some four operating pillars and six global agency brands. There was, uh, there were talks of consolidations. If you can tell us more about it and how did it happen in India? So look, uh, 2020 was not a great year for anyone, uh, including for us. Obviously, business was lower in 2020 than it was in 2019, uh, and it did have its impact. However, what we did do as a company was that we underwent a transformation program that did involve restructuring and we had landed up to a, in, into a scenario where we had almost 160 brands globally. Now, uh, that's not a sustainable scenario in that sense, you know, and, and you, there, there are opportunities to drive efficiencies. I'm a big believer of one PNL, one Densu, right? Ultimately, what does the client want? They want that you should be able to address all their marketing communication services needs, right? In as simple a manner as possible in the fastest, most efficient, most productive way. And if we can give that all in under one umbrella, uh, which I think where I think Densu has a significant advantage over any of our competitors, both globally and more so in India, because by nature, we are integrated. If you can do that, I think that's the best position to be in. And if you're in that position, you don't need 160 brands. You do need some brands and that and we decided that those are going to be six uh, global brands and and there will be some local brands also in that but so that was one of the uh, areas of transformation so just like how we advise our clients you know for digital transformation or for transforming their organizations i think it's most important that agencies also look inwards and transform themselves so that you're future ready and i think that's the exercise which we uh, announced and embarked upon and bulk of it i think is in most of the parts of the world are is is already done and it, it is underway and uh, and it's progressing very well at the moment and in india well in india also we are in the process of consolidation restructuring etc so for one you know we now have three service lines three clear service lines there's creative media and there's cxm uh, so that we, wherever possible we are able to combine the researches combine the resources etc avoid duplication where you need to be and to be, give a more holistic solution to the client uh, we've already announced for example the media service line leadership we've announced there's going to be a ceo to look at our operations which is kartika here in the case of india with divya in the case of uh, media likewise there'll be a creative service line lead there'll be a C cxm service line lead and so on and so forth so the whole new uh, way of working, which Global has adopted, uh, India's, I would say, pretty much on par or almost at the forefront of it, because uh, we're, we're very much a part of the global drive on that. So uh, definitely in India also, that's progressing well. So there were also talks of, you know, uh, cost savings, uh, which was also announced officially that the entire group uh, is aiming to achieve, uh, uh, there was a number, you know, it was given in yens that uh, we are going to permanently lower our cost base. And uh, did this also include, uh, you know, reducing your headcounts and... Uh, I think it's it's given in that report and it is announced. It, it re-looked at uh, number of legal entities, number of brands, rationalizing... So they're going to cut 6,000 staff, but... But I, I don't know what the number is globally, frankly, uh, I won't know that. But there was a, like you rightly said, there was a restructuring program that was announced and that was uh, uh, carried out and in some places was, was, was still in uh, process. But it was a transformation program. So while there would be some areas maybe where staff was extra, but there were other areas, particularly in the transformation areas where you needed to hire a lot more people. So we underwent a significant transformation program and now are coming out of that uh, much stronger, I would think, where we are. And the best sign of that is that after a long time, we're, you know, we're now showing growth. So that to me is the best. The only test in the market is that are you growing? 
and uh, and it's, it's happy to see that at least so far i mean you know in today we are in that scenario you cannot predict what's going to happen even two months three months later because of the covid uh, circumstances but so far um, things are looking much much better and growth is back which i think is a good sign for the industry and good sign for densu as well and uh, where is that bulk of growth coming from i think more uh, So is it is it from cost savings and the transformation and other oh, things, or it is it is also coming from the new business? Or growth never comes from cost saving. Okay. May be able to improve your margins by cost saving. Growth comes by getting more business. That business may either be organic or inorganic or uh, whatever. Mm-hmm. You may be able to uh, have better extraction from that business, etc. But my focus always is to grow the business. Uh, it, we, we were hit by a pandemic. It was a once in a hundred year kind of a scenario. It dropped down the overall revenues that the uh, businesses had in most markets. In fact, I would say in almost all markets, it dropped the revenues down. Obviously, the cost base has to be adjusted to the to the new revenue level, the dropped revenue level. But you are never going to be able to grow back by cutting the cost. You have to get your costs in line with the new revenue. There's no doubt about that, uh, and that's a very important exercise to take. But in my view, if you have to go out of that, uh, get out back to where it was, you've got to grow. So when I say growth, uh, I mean business growth, revenue growth. That's not going to come ever from cost cutting uh, in that sense. So my focus is that how, what are the other what are the other services you can provide to a client? Can we give a more integrated offering to a client and therefore charge a premium for that offering? Or uh, are there any parts of the offering which currently the client might be using me for? let's say only creative can i also offer media services to them we are for example leaders in digital in uh, cxm and tech uh, and all of that can be and every client needs that can we also offer those services to them so that's where growth comes in and i think that's that's where our growth is coming in from at least so you uh, handle the entire apac region uh, the, you have already touched on that but i would want to understand in detail which of the markets have been most resilient and if you have to uh, measure india on that uh, resilience scale where do we stand and uh, which market can we take inspiration from you know uh, which has similar of, kind of situations and in, in terms of resilience i would say markets like uh, taiwan markets like vietnam were relatively least impacted by covid they even singapore to an extent they managed their covid situation the number of cases or the number of the amount of disruption better than most other markets did so i think they stood out but then like again like i said some of them are now having their almost like their first wave forget about the uh, second wave in terms of the market that actually got hit the most and earliest was china if you remember this we had an office in we have a office in wuhan which is uh, quite a large office big offices in shanghai in beijing and so on and so forth and even before the chinese new year last year somewhere around february things were already coming to a grinding halt and the number of cases so they were hit first even before rest of the world hadn't yet realized even we in india hadn't yet realized the scale and enormity of it so but but while they were hit first they also actually bounced back much earlier than uh, others and i think that's a good example so if you look at the gdp of china for the first 3 or 4 months of of this calendar year it's actually grown by uh, mid teens i think 17 18% or something like that is is the figure so what a tremendous obviously they were hit last year and the growth has already started coming and i think that's the that's what india as a country should also aim for uh, there is no doubt that our economy got hit last year and and therefore every aspect of the economy got hit but i think as things improve as vaccinations improve as the health situation improves our focus now has to be that how does the economy quickly bounce back and growth starts coming in and like i said i feel that process will be gradual and i feel it's around the festive season that you'll see it coming from our industry perspective that you will see it coming you know more to itself so this uh, uh, this feeling of you know uh, uh, despair that that a lot of indians have experienced in last two months uh, and you know still uh, that that consumer sentiment all those things that you people talk about you know it has somewhere been heard do you think this will uh, also impact festive season in the long run or by then most of the people would have come out of it look i hope it doesn't impact uh, for two three reasons one is we are a very resilient nation uh, indians uh, you know we, we can take a lot we can absorb a lot and then get on with it maybe it's a part of our uh, 
feeling of karma or 5000 years of culture or what i don't know the reason i'm not, i'm not the expert on that but we're quite resilient as a nation when hardships come we all come together then we get out of it and we you know move forward um, uh, on that so i do feel that we will get there because look everything uh, there are a lot of things which are in our favor we have a large young population which is moving very fast our economy even in the worst case scenario if you listen to the most uh, negative of the uh, uh, projections you know different people are giving it's still showing a high single digit growth at least some are saying double digit but most most of the estimates are coming of the economy between 8 to 12% or so so i don't know where it will finally land but if you're going to grow at 8 10% in that then growth is going to come back we have uh, i'm very optimistic about india for me medium term or long term look there are 1.3 1.4 billion of us we have a huge market within ourselves with huge cost advantages we have an amazing talent pool you know when i was in school now many many years ago we were always taught that population is our biggest problem it was one of the biggest problem you know and that time you had a population control measures were being announced and hum do hamare do and mass sterilization and this and that today the world has turned on its head our biggest asset is our man force our people our, our human force right so uh, and and that's what is giving us a domestic market to capture there are industries uh, i mean look at the number of it related startups that are relatively new when i say relatively new last 2 3 4 years may who are today commanding unicorn plus uh, valuation right so we have the brain power we have the management capability there are 60 large global companies over a billion dollars which are run by indians globally right so we've got a very bright uh, workforce we have very intelligent people we've got a natural advantage in some industries at least like it and i would hope even advertising one day because we've got very very good talent uh, in that area so we've got a lot going for us we're also age is on our side we're relatively a younger population than the others so i see no reason why in the medium term or in the long run our growth will not be good equally as a nation we can shoot ourselves in the foot also so unless we have some political upheavals or communal upheavals or things that are uh, you know unpredictable at this point in time i'm quite optimistic that the next 10 years india will do very very well and there are a lot of indicators to that you look at electricity consumption the way it's been going up you look at various you know surrogate factors uh, when you study the macro economy you can see that we are poised for a good 10 years i feel ashish sir coming back to advertising and marketing industry uh, i mean correct me if i'm wrong there was last 2020 in 2020 a lot of pitches were Uh, postponed you know because uh, there was so much uncertainty many brands did not want to go for a new agency or they did not uh, they weren't sure that you know if this is the right time to call the pitch and uh, is it true i mean that's what i've learned a lot of pitches were uh, held back last year if if pitches won't happen globally? then how do you get new how do you add new businesses are you talking about globally or in india uh globally they eventually started but in india uh, particularly so a lot of at the moment were... if i look at asia pacific at the moment i think this is the busiest pitch season i've ever seen in the last maybe 10 years i guess i can tell you this at like, this you mean you mean a few months i'm talking of 2020 2020 the uh 2020 obviously in the middle of a pandemic uh, mm. i mean pitching was still happening but obviously it was subdued right because mm. whole world was in the throes of a pandemic so the chances of that were so, but if you look at now let's say last 3 okay. 4 months which is the which is the best measure that you get the most latest measure some of the largest fmcgs companies globally are under pitch some of the big uh, you know consumer uh, companies are under pitch some of the software companies are under pitch so it's just some of the biggest pitches if you total it up I, that number will be will run into hundreds of billions of dollars uh, on that and every agency group will tell you because globally is the same few agencies that in you know that largely participate in these and i'm not only talking about media i'm also talking about creative they'll all tell you that uh, i mean it's almost like you don't have bandwidth to pitch kind of a scenario so there's a pitch palooza i would say which is on as as we speak uh, some have already happened some are happening some are about to happen etc so it's a, for, from a pitching point of view it's probably the busiest season in a long long time for a busy, busiest 3 4 months That that the industry has seen in a long, long time. 
is good news for the industry well e4m always knows all the pitches before they happen <laughs> so you should know it before i do no i mean I, i maybe the last year was like so slow that i stopped keeping track of them <laughs> so i mean i knew knew about l'oreal and we had reported some of them which I, I, i'm not taking any specific name yeah. i'm just saying that Sorry. globally there are lots of pitches in play uh, and some are local pitches some are regional pitches and many are global pitches uh, some are in the creative only area some are in the media only area some are combined pitches so there's there's a lot of activity going Uh, you know, in every adversity lies an opportunity. So, what, according to you, will be the biggest opportunity for advertisers in media in this post-pandemic world? I think the biggest opportunity is that we probably lived through the worst, and therefore, uh, they, you know, there's always some amount of fat and wastage in any system that builds up over a period of time. Take one example of travel. All of us were traveling fifteen, uh, twenty days a month. We we thought that. there was no other way of working uh, other than getting on to a flight to go for a 2 hour meeting uh, and to you know spend a night in a hotel and then come back the next day with all and we thought that was the only way life would work i had never worked from home before this had happened ever ever in my life never not even one day right uh, uh, on that now we realize that 80 90% yes there are some things that you still need everybody to come together but 80 90% of the work can happen pretty efficiently on video calls like we are doing one or or through other means of communication and therefore it may not be that necessary to some of some business travel may still be necessary but it may not be necessary to the extent that we were taking on earlier office space for example most companies at least the larger companies will give flexibility for quite some time to come to their uh, staff right uh, people are reluctant uh, they've also got used to a certain type of a lifestyle so the back to work is going to be a process it's again not going to be a switch that one fine morning you say okay now back to 9 to 6 and every 100% people come in and log in at 9 o'clock sign the muster and so on it's not going to happen so office space real estate space how do you this so there is a huge amount of uh, i would say i won't say wastage but i would say uh efficiencies that have come into the system and that money that you have saved can be put into transformational areas for example e-commerce for example digital in all of this and this is luckily the reason particularly in india where we were relatively less impacted and actually have done quite well in this period is because all this while we were saying digital is where you've got to be digital is where you've got to be ahead and the one part of the business which was least impacted of course everything was impacted but which was least impacted was actually digital and being digitally ahead helped us is helping us uh, in a time like this so those some of those monies that you were spending on airfare or hotels or whatever can now be put into hiring better talent can be put into you know uh, digitally transforming yourself if you haven't already done it etc etc and i think that's that's a big uh, plus the other bit i think is that after this pandemic geography is history it doesn't matter whether you are sitting in muzaffarnagar or mumbai if there is good talent which is available or melbourne if there is good talent which is available you should now be able to attract them uh, from anywhere because you know if you are going to be working virtually or you have the option of working flexibly then where you are located doesn't matters much lesser i, I won't say doesn't matter in some instances it will matter but it matters lesser and lesser so it opens up a complete new talent pool uh, catchment area which i think is very very important for us because the single biggest problem that faces our industry and not just in india everywhere i think is people because as an industry we've been experts in poaching from one another If somebody is there i pay 110 i get it somebody else pays 120 he takes so playing musical chairs with the same talent we've concentrated much less in growing the pool of talent that is available to us and the fact is if i look 30 33 years ago when i joined advertising to today advertising agencies used to be day one companies in i am ahmedabad right after a period of time we weren't even able to be day five company and therefore we stopped going to iims then we started going to second rung mba schools then we started going to only maybe good colleges and not and slowly so why was that sir because there were so many other hundreds of other options that came up as liberalization happened as more industries came in which were much better paying uh, the remuneration in advertising was 
no way a match for a mckinsey or a city bank in those days or you know uh, etc so you couldn't you couldn't keep pace with that when we joined advertising for example somebody came out from i am one person went to lintas one person went to levers same batch same everything there was 10 years later the situation was very different 30 years later it is completely different right so uh, so i feel the quality of talent going out from the industry is better than the quality of talent coming in so one of the biggest challenges and opportunities therefore for us is to get in great talent and to make sure that the talent we have is properly uh, looked after retained incentivized is bright enough and i feel this flexibility in working futures way of working etc will be steps in that direction and we can at least you know use it for some uh, some correction in that side and collectively as an industry we've got to grow the talent pool in advertising as an industry rather than only concentrate in you know coaching from from one another so uh, before we conclude i mean i i would just want to understand that uh, were there some kind of initiatives that densu as a company took for employees who were suffering from covid or you know or or their families so it is it is a, it is more about you know because this is resilience story you know what were the things that we as a society did for each other if you can yeah, you look, share some examples i was i was completely overwhelmed by the kind of response that forget us as a company as individual employees were uh, giving in that first of all our global company i mean globally for india specifically for india when we were in this saying our global company ran a uh, donation voluntary donation campaign through uh, you know through an ngo in britain for to get oxygen concentrators if you remember at that time oxygen was the biggest problem yeah. not only did the company donate a lot of money but individuals uh, donated a lot of money to help india not their colleagues in india but to help india and i think that was brilliant when you have uh, you know 50 60000 people uh, sort of helping in that you you really feel good and you feel a part of that uh, on that bit in india i think uh, anand and his team really really did well. so there were two two three kinds of efforts right one is a very organized structured kind of a practical effort so for example insurance covers to be increased in case somebody has a sad unfortunate instance of somebody passing away make sure that the insurance or through other ways you're covering a few years of salary to that person to the family is less hit right then there were practical issues so we for example tied up with several hotel chains you know people don't have place to quarantine it's easy because not everybody is staying in very large homes where you can take a separate home separate bathroom etc or if you're fearful somebody in your family has got it how do you prevent from, you know what do you do etc many of our staff stay as paying guests or you know shared accommodation etc on that uh, so we tied up with uh, hotel chains that are uh, uh, i mean as a corporate deal or whatever so in case somebody has a problem you could do that um, uh, various i mean uh, oxygen which was a big focus uh, so we have a division called indeed which is our csr division work with government authorities in haryana which is for gurgaon and, and several gov- state governments maharashtra government etc to see work with some of our clients to see how that could be uh, fulfilled we had a doctor on on call wellness programs and and it's a continuing effort on that but to me the most heartening thing was that individuals leaders in different team leaders leaders in different locations because everybody was as helpless as anyone else they took it upon themselves meri team ke is bande ke mother ko ye medicine chahiye immediately pure everywhere you know the news is spread in that network and everybody is running here and there to try to arrange that because it was it was a survival issue in in that stage nobody is bothering about who's paying where's the money coming from and i think that spirit to me was um, was like a silver lining in a otherwise very dark cloud uh, and while a hundred activities are going on were going on particularly touched by our, the world doing this for india and for indian individuals doing it you know for their colleagues and their colleagues relatives and so on and i think to me that shows uh, that that makes me so proud you know of of india as my country densu as my company and all the people in it uh, so to me i think that was that was one good thing also uh, thank you so much for talking to us it's always pleasure to you know uh, have any conversation with you and it's, it's so much to learn from you so thank you again and uh, we uh, wish you all the best
stay safe thank you